So before the practice exercises, we ask this question. Does zone load equal plant load? So I'll, I'll start with this with this question here and just take these numbers at, at face value, these, these kind of made up numbers. Pick one of these numbers if this is the some of the zone processes that we've been looking at. If there's a, a, a sensible load, say of 70 tons, a latent load of, of 30 tons, or if you were to consider the, that as a total, which one of these really sizes the chiller? What do we care about when we're looking at the plant? So you think it might be the Q sub T, Q sub L, Q sub, Q sub S. If we had one of these tonnages asso associated with the zone load, which of these tonnages would you then use to say size a chiller? Well, it turns out that you're really looking at, at none of these for the majority of systems that we're going to see. And I, I'm going to go into why in a minute, but the, the, the big takeaway, just to spoil it up front, is that it's not going to be the zone load that we care about. It's going to be, for, for sizing of equipment in the plant, it's going to be whatever that heat exchanger, in this case a cooling coil, sees on the other side of it. And that, that may be that may be dissociated a little bit from the zone load and the that process. So really central central plant equipment is gonna care about, in this case for a cooling coil, what's supplying this cold air. So let's take a look at that. So if we look at these as interconnected systems and we say on the right we have the zone with the thermostat that's gonna determine how comfortable we need to keep the space. And on the left, let's say we have a chiller, and we're going to go into what a chiller looks like and how that's put together. But for right now, just assume that it's it's a piece of equipment that manages this uh, the zone load. So how are they going to be connected? Well, you're going to have an air handler that's going to be put together something like this. So we're showing an economizer, which is pretty typical for energy conservation purposes, and we'll definitely go into this more later. But the economizer on the air handler is going to be a series of dampers that's going to determine whether it's more energy efficient to use outside air or recirculate zone air to uh, put across coils and send back into the space. So when we put it all together we may see something like this where the chiller has this chill water loop that goes to a coil and in the in the yellow stream we're going to see outside air going across that coil being supplied by the supply fan and then going through the space, picking up the zone load, hitting the thermostat, and then what? Does it go back to the unit? Does it go back through the system? Does it go outside the building? Well, in most cases with what we're going to call an integrated economizer, which means that it can keep its, its outside air dampers open when it's using chill water, when it's doing mechanical cooling, uh, in, in many cases that, that's going to be exhausting the air. So the chill water coil never really sees the zone load in this case. And th that's a pretty critical concept. So there's, there's going to be some exceptions, and you may have a really humid place where uh, as it gets more and more hot and humid outside, you are starting to recirculate that air. But there's typically always going to be some minimum ventilation where you have to bring outside air out in a way that makes it that we really need to focus on the coil and understand the weather outside and how that impacts what the coil sees. So we're going to get into some weather resources, like, like this is an example of a, an ASHRAE Fundamentals page that talks about for a specific climate what these different design conditions are. They, they call them occurrences, so the 1% occurrence is typically what designers will design to as a, as a, as a worst case. Not the absolute worst, but the kind of cost efficient worse where you're going to get most of your you know 99% of your days are going to be that hot or less and the 99% occurrence is, is actually uh, the on the flip side the heating condition that is going to be not the absolute worst case but what you size your equipment to so it's really important to focus then on the coil and know what's going in and out of that coil so on the air side in this case we're looking outside air on one side and then that supply air condition on the other side and that's what's going to be used to size the chiller so for any application you're looking at think about what the coil sees which may or may not be what the zone is using but in most cases it's going to be dependent in part or exclusively on the outside air for in for something like chiller sizing 
So we can really look at a different process on this chart, which is not just the, the zone load process, but a cooling process. And that's going to be from this, this outside air condition. In this case, we're looking at Monterey, California's 1% cooling, which is a, a fairly mild 74 degrees at a uh, little over 40% relative humidity. And we're going to look at what it takes to cool that down to the coil discharge temperature. So accounting for some bypass coil factor, what that, uh, what that delta H is that's going to be between the outside air and what's coming out of the coil. So the input to the coil and the output. So ironically for, for, the, for this Monterey example, this is actually pretty close to the zone load, but how many, how many locations are going to have weather that is, is, is really this <laughs> mild and you're going to have a cooling condition that's going to be sized like this. Many ca cases where you have mechanical cooling, it's going to be quite a bit hotter. And even for these mild conditions, it's important to understand that that's still a design case that's going to happen I inherently a very small amount of time over average conditions. So a more typical condition may look like this. And you can see how the delta H and the way that you might need to have the, the, the chiller sized or have a capacity that can, that can provide for the smaller delta H, how, how that needs to be accounted for. So it's not just important what the design is, but also what part load conditions are. And we'll get into that more about making sure we have equipment that can meet that part load condition and what the effects are when we don't. And with that, understanding the role of this outside air in, in acting as a load on our plant equipment, we're going to look a little bit more in terms of what weather resources are, are out there for us to use.